Tonight on the bench, I've got an Adcom GFP-555 preamp. Um, someone gave this to me for free. They told me it had a hum or a buzz, and that's all I know about it. So in this video, we're going to power it on, take a look, see what the actual problem is. And if there is an actual problem, we'll go through and we'll get it fixed. So if that sounds interesting, stick around. Here's a better look at the front of the GFP-555. Um, we've got a standard power switch, headphone jack, balance, bass, treble, um, a switch to engage the tone control, contour, which is like their name for loudness, a low and high cut filter. You can switch between mono, and then you get to choose um, your recording or playback settings from phono, which is both uh, moving magnet and moving coil with adjustable capacitance, which you'll see in a moment on the back, uh, CD player, tuner, tape one, tape two, video aux, and your volume knob. Let me flip it around to the back and show you the other side. All right, so on the back, um, you can select your phono capacitance there, 55, 175, or 235 picofarads. You got the choice between low output moving coil and moving magnet or high output moving coil. Ground, phono, CD, tuner, tape one, tape two, video aux. And you have um, kind of like an effects loop, which is cool. So you could put an EQ or something in there. You could obviously do that um, from the main out, but you have yet another one, which is nice. And you've got a ridiculously beefy power cord for a preamp here. And I think I see why. You can have uh, 400 VA of power on the two switched outlets or 800 VA of power on the unswitched. So they must have um, compensated for the fact that a lot of people plug power amps into these even though you're not supposed to. So that's kind of a nice perk. And there's a um, one amp fuse in there. So let's take the cover off and do a quick visual inspection before I um, plug this thing in. All right, so you're going to need a two millimeter hex to take these two screws out here. I actually already took them out. I needed them for another Adcom that I use, the uh, G GTP 502 uh, preamp tuner I have on my bench, and it was missing those two screws, and that one's in nicer condition, so I just sacrificed them for that unit. But uh, anyways, there's just these four screws on the bottom sides here to take out with a uh, number two Phillips. Carefully flip it back over. Uh, there's nothing on the back edge, it looks like, so it should just slide off. Is it caught on? Probably bent. Yeah, it was bent a little bit. All right. So there we go. Let me get the camera adjusted here and take a look. I already see a few potential issues. Okay, that nice copper ground plane. So, I see the glue around the capacitors is bad, and I can't tell if they're leaking electrolyte or not. Let's see, it's definitely got the uh, corrosive glue thing going on. They're not bulging from the top. Well, there's some green crusties there. That's not good, probably from the glue. Um, bunch of tantalum caps. Yeah, I think, um, let's go ahead and plug this in, power it up and see what we hear. I just noticed something interesting when I was going to plug this in. If you look closely, you can see that somebody modified the um, wider end of the AC cord here. <laughs> It'll be something if that has to do with the hum. They cut that fatter part off so they could use it in a non-polarized outlet or some other piece of audio equipment. Uh, so yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, so I have the audio oscillator from my distortion analyzer plugged into the video slash aux port here and uh, I've got that set to video aux. I've got the volume all the way down um, we've got 100 millivolts of signal into that video aux input. Um, I've got the, there's two outputs on the back. There's the lab output and the normal output. And if I remember correctly, the lab output is direct coupled and the normal output is capacitor coupled. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and flip it on. It's on. I didn't see, I have it on the dim bulb tester. I had it on the dim bulb tester a moment ago before I um, started recording and there's no issues there. Um, 
So I've got the lab output left channel connected into my Siglent multimeter here, and we're getting 0 0.5 millivolts DC, so I'm not worried about that. There's no issues there. And let's try the right channel. So 0 0.2 millivolts. There's no, no problems there at all. So, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to plug the lab output into the inputs of my audio analyzer, and then I'm going to focus the camera on the audio analyzer to see what kind of output waveform we get from this thing. Okay, so at 1 kilohertz, the manual says it should have uh, 40 millivolts of input for half a volt of output. Um, this isn't calibrated into 600 ohms right now, so the amplitude here isn't correct, but this is equal to a 40 millivolt output into 600 ohms. Um, so we're at, on the left channel, 0.15% distortion, and on the right, 0.14. So I don't see any issues there, but something like a hum, you might not necessarily see on the distortion analyzer. Sometimes you can. Um, so what you're seeing on the scope here, the clear sine wave is the audio frequency signal, and the white fuzzy stuff in the background, that's from the residual distortion output on the back of the audio analyzer. Um, so you can sometimes see what the distortion looks like, but in this case it's so low we're not really seeing anything there. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to do one more test um, with another piece of equipment here before I plug it into my power amp and to my speakers, and I'll be right back with that. Alright, so I've got the left channel output connected to my HP 3562A dynamic signal analyzer. I'm still feeding the ADCOM that 1 kilohertz signal. Um, and I've got the horizontal scale here set from 0 to 800 hertz, and we're at negative 25 to 1, negative 125 dB on the vertical scale. I've got the marker on the 60 hertz right now, so the 60 hertz is down negative 63 dBV, and I wanted to check out how far the harmonics of the 60 hertz are down, so I think that that's pretty quiet. I don't think there's a 60 hertz hum. I'm not sure that there's 120. Actually, where's our 120? Our 120 is buried in the noise. Let's see here, there's our 120. You can barely see the marker bouncing around on it. So that's completely down in the noise floor. And then the um, third harmonic of 60 is at negative uh, 93. We're, we're just down in the noise. So this thing looks really clean. I, I have a feeling I'm gonna plug it in to a power amp and it's going to work fine. Let's see what happens. All right, one more thing. If you look at the spec sheet in the manual, it says total harmonic distortion 0.005%. What it doesn't tell you is what other conditions were used when they did that. But uh, a moment ago, you would have noticed I was at like 0 0.15, I think it was. Um, but they say total harmonic distortion. They don't say total harmonic distortion plus noise. So if we go back over to my analyzer, um, yeah, so 0 0.14, 0 0.15, that's listed as dist n here, which is total harmonic distortion plus noise. If I switch this into just THD, which is you have to hit the shift button, look at that. It's saying 0 0.0006 and 0 0.0008, and the waveform on the scope is perfect and there's no residual at all. So this thing looks really clean. Alright, so I hooked this up to my um, ADCOM GFA 535L bench power amp and it's it's perfect. There's no issues with it at all. It's dead silent. Now I've only tried the um, video slash aux input so far. I've just got my old iPhone connected to it with the lightning to three and a half millimeter cable and um, as soon as you switch the amp on and the preamp, you don't hear any thump or buzz or a hum or anything. It is dead quiet, which makes sense because that's what we were seeing on the signal analyzer. Um, so I'm not sure what this guy had going on. Maybe there's an intermittent issue and I'll have to let this play for a while to see if it gets worse over time. Or maybe he had some sort of ground loop going on. Um, I did try flipping the cord around the other way to see if it happened at that point, but it didn't. But depending on how he had it connected to his other equipment could have uh, accounted for that. So I'm going to try to play a snip of a royalty-free song here so you can hear it. All right, well, uh, like I said earlier, I can't get this thing to hum anywhere. I tried all the inputs. 
I tried the phono input using a file with a reverse RIA filter on it so I didn't have to hook an actual turntable up. It seems dead silent. I, I don't know. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the mic up near the speaker and turn the volume up so you can hear that there's no hum coming out of it. And then I'll play some of this royalty-free music so you can hear the quality. Let's give this a shot. All right, so I paused the music, holding the mic up to the speaker. Got the volume all the way up. There's nothing. It's dead silent, which is what we were seeing on the signal analyzer. All right. So I'll turn it back down, then I'll play some of this music. So I'll unlock my phone. Sounds great. All right, well, I guess that wasn't a very interesting video, but we got to see some test equipment being used to um, look at a complaint complaint might not be there or might not have led to anything. Um, this thing should get recapped. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm probably just going to put it aside for now. I have too many other projects, but I'll probably add these uh, to my DigiKey shopping cart. I don't keep these like 4,700 microfarad 50 volt in stock. Um, so I'll, um, I'll let it play for a week or so. And if there's any issues with it and I need to address it, I'll make another video. But that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.